Welcome in. My name is Yao A. Owusu Jr., your resident vitality consultant. To my right, I have Andre Bivens Jr., the alien. To my left, Nicholas Lopez Jr. He's the Terminator, and I am the wizard. We are the Vitality Handbook. Without any further ado, season three, we're back at it. Exercise. Fellas, let's have a conversation. This is what you came here for. You're not entertained. When we talk about exercise, we're all relaxed. He got his biceps showing. Dre always has his biceps show, the little shoulder action, all right? So we love exercise. It is the lowest of the totem pole when we're talking about the five pillars, but just as important, it's interdependent. You need it. So let's talk, man. To work out or not to work out? That is the question. I mean, it's technically the, that's like the drug that we push. Mm. And we all came up, that's all, we all came up pushing that mm. first. Mm. So it is the, uh, you know, I want to pay homage to the fact that, you know, we've been able to establish a lot more than what we came in originally doing, you know? Because, you know, so I think, so can't forget that it's like a fundamental, everybody's going to want to exercise, um, so I want to take it back to that that zone, that mindset. Maybe okay. we were all in at some point, or or maybe the first the first day, like what the first oh man the first week nice. of training. Like oh the, man, the, for real? The first week of training, like where was your mindset at? Did you? Oh, I got it. When it comes to exercise alone, okay. week one, so I'm pulling on your shirt with the name tag. Like let's go, let's go there. The first time you basically made your first dollar. Helping oh, others oh, exercise. Okay, okay. I, th yeah, I thought yeah. you were going to say first time yeah, exercise, first time, like okay. teenage first time exercise. So well, you're talking about first time in the exercise game. We can, in the go, exercise we can go both. We can go both. Well, I'm, I'm going to go first time exercise, period. Okay. Okay. Skinny, cron scrawny kid, uh, West African, six foot. Uh, that's how I am tall now, but I was around 100 and I would say 50, 52 pounds. Right now I'm like 192 pounds. Okay. So that's where I started. And uh, someone said, you need to lift some weights. It's going to make you stronger, therefore make you faster. I always thought, if I lift, I'm going to get slower. So that's a runner. Conception. You know what I mean? So I started lifting, 12th grade, going into my uh, freshman year of college. That's the first time I lifted weights. First time I actually got on a weightlifting program ever. Hmm. So that's where the, the misconception and the myth yes. when you know, Daniel was like, oh, no, it's actually, okay, these guys are... This level, I'm a freshman, so oh, these guys are lifting. I need to do this. Period. In order to get better. To Period. Eat. I put some mm. stuff on the on high school, you know, on the bar, you lift, but I wasn't lift. I didn't have instruction of some. Okay, your feet need to be set. Abs are tight. Shoulders need to be under your knuckles. Like actually learning the technique of lifting. That was freshman year in college. So that's where I started. Uh, that's when I went from 152, 155 pounds to around 183 pounds. Uh, that was in one year. Yeah, that juice. Uh, yeah, the juice was just uh, juices, juice juices, you know, smoothies, acai mm -hmm. berries, you know what I mean, blackberries, raspberries. There was a little bit of lasagna and some pizza too because we just, they needed calories on me. I needed to eat. So uh, that's the impetus of me. That's where I started, you know. How about that first dollar? That first dollar uh, was in D.C. It was in D.C. I was living in D.C., and uh, Washington Sports Clubs, TSI, Townsend Sports International, shout out. All right, New York Sports Clubs, the same, same chain, right? Uh, that's where a lot of people started, <laughs> started, started, you know what I mean? I like, how Drake, I like how nervous Drake gets every time we mention anything. Hey, listen, that's where, that's where I learned the, the, the art of, of selling. That's where I learned the art of putting together a program for clients. That's where I learned the, the art of, of working and working out myself. Because once you get in that grinding mode, you stop training yourself and then you can kind of get in that loop. This happens to everybody. As you get packed and full, you don't work like you were when you were at the YMCA by yourself and you had no clients. Don't make that face. Ever. Unless, unless you were never a professional before, if you were a professional in this game, you didn't work until you were full because you thought that's yep. what you needed to do. Then the training sessions that you should do, three, four hours of training. Oh, I never did that. I should we did. Of course ahead, you did, bro. Because you're building your clientele. That's all it you is. Did. You, you, have build, you, you have to build your clientele, and then you get your, your core that's going to stick with you. No, it's a, it's something about hold you. And I'm, wanna, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about the working out. So the working out. Before you had any clients, 
Think about how much energy and vigor and intensity you had when you had zero clients trying to grind to get clients. Your grind of working out, your grind of everything was much more beastly. When you got clients, you might have you might have tried to emulate that same thing, but you weren't grinding and working like you were as you were making it. It's impossible. Yeah, it's impossible. Or else you didn't progress. If you were working the same, then you didn't progress. You regressed. You had to have progressed. You progressed in clients. You progressed in hours put in. You progressed in professionalism. You progressed in your diet cleaning up. You progressed in how, how your workouts have to be isolated and, and, and very straight to the point. No fluff. That's progression. So that's what I mean is like, so when I, my, when I first got some dollars for training people, I had to learn how to navigate and manage my own wellness while creating my business. That's a whole different level. That's when you know you're a professional. So that's what I remember is like, how do I make my exercise programs work and maximize while I'm still training six to eight people a day? What was the thing you were most nervous about? I'm a skinny guy, so losing my, losing my gains. So I had to learn how to compound lift for size. I, I always knew how to bodybuild, but I had to go three days a week. Those were the only times I could really get compound lifting because I was training so much. I didn't have time to prep my body for an hour anymore because I had back to back to back to back to back clients. Unless you've never had back to back to back clients, you don't know. Yep. I you agree. don't know what it is to have six o'clock client, seven o'clock a.m. client, nine o'clock a.m. client, 10 o'clock a.m. client. I got to eat and work out within an hour because I have to get back to another client in an hour. So you got one hour to eat, prep your body, lift, wash off, and get back. That's what I'm saying. That's what brings me back where I was like, oh, I'm a professional now. I have to manage my entire everything, how I eat, how I train, how I sleep, how I interact with clients, my professionalism, and I still got to work out like a dog like I did when I first got into this game. It's very difficult. So that's what I go to. Skinny guy in a freshman year of college, lifting for the first time. Oh, achy. Oh, my God. I've never, like, I've never lifted before. It's a different level. And then now, as a professional, now, how does my body feel after I'm lifting? How am I recovering after I have eight clients in one day? It's, not, it's different from eight hours of work. Not, not, shout out to the nine to fivers. It's different sitting at your desk. But having to pick up weights, put down weights, demonstrate. I'm running, they're running, they're jumping, yeah, so, I'm jumping. So it's nine to different. five compared to training hours. Uh, uh, a nine to five, one hour is a training hour is uh, three hours. For sure. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> For it sure, is. for sure, it's a fact. For sure, I, I, I one of my it's girlfriends. Dirty, you know, shout shout out to the girlfriend. I ain't gonna name her name, but yeah. she's like, "Oh, train I acting? She just said, "Listen, okay, train." I let her train one of my clients. Just literally, she didn't touch weight. She didn't. She just told them to do this exercise. Go there and just watch them. She didn't touch weight. Then put back weight. Nothing. Exhausted. Lower backs hurting. Yeah. Feet. All that. Yeah. Feet hurting. Because yeah. you got to constantly be engaged. That's completely different. How you at your computer? You got to touch nobody for three, four hours. You and your computer. But you got to be engaged with another human being, and you got to entertain, and you have to instruct, you have to coach. They're coming in with their bad day. That's a different story. So when it comes to exercise, that's one thing that's helped me maintain a hectic lifestyle as we're going through another transition. Prolific Creators, he, he does all of this. We're adding on new employees. This guy, systems like crazy. I'm talking all the time. you got to have energy. So exercise has been my saving grace. I don't want to say, like, I'm, I'm disregarding it. Still, when it comes down to it, that's going to be one of my favorite things to do is train my body. Thanks. That's it. So when it comes to exercise, guys, when, how'd you first start? I've always, even so if it was 12 exercise. years old, even if it was. So yeah, I've been, I've been trying to do push-ups since I was five years old, six years old, been trying, but I never was consistent. Obviously, I do my five, two, right. three, whatever, throughout the years, and then eventually, um, you know, I had a, a nice little spurt in, in middle school, up into high school, then fell off with that because of uh, living situations mm -hmm. and family issues. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. So, uh, and, and basically, yeah, that's it. So all the way through there, then when I turned uh, 18, around 18, 19, um, I wasn't playing basketball no more. The activity dropped out of high school. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm like, hold on. I seen a little belly popping in. I'm like, <laughs> I can't be no muscle with a belly. Yeah. And I just started doing push-ups, pull-ups. I started from there. And, and just, you know, you guys see, I started out with one 
doing one pull up, five sets of one pull, one, one rep. Mm. And then I, I was like, push-ups, I will be able to do push-ups. You can bang those out. And I did that. And the goal was for me was, I said, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to treat myself to a gym, but I have to do it for eight months straight. Not meaning straight days, you know, but eight months, stay consistent for eight months. And then once I get to eight months, and then, you know, if I'm still consistent, and then I feel like my body kind of plateaued, you know, uh, for the look that I wanted. Right. You know what I mean? To right. put on that size and that right. mass and that. That that uh, dominant dense look. Right. Um, then that's when you know. Uh, these there. Yeah. Dominant dense look. Yeah. So um, you know, went to the YMCA and then went in there and just blew up within like three months. They, they thought I was on roids. It was like, yo, I was just like, I'm just consistent. I'm in here. That's it. So uh, that yeah and, and yeah that's YMCA. basically how it started out. Yeah, the YMCA. YMCA. Yeah. How about the first dollar in um, the exercise game? The first dollar, I remember the first dollar, but I never was satisfied with. So, like, what was the story around? Like, did you know about the personal training industry that existed? The box gym. Oh no, I didn't know. I honestly didn't know about the personal training. I didn't know. So, what was that first instance where you're like, "Oh, there's money in this"? When when we were at this gym, I still wasn't because it was you know you're not hand in hand, you know, but. You seen that there was money to be made. Let's just put it that way. You seen there was money to be made at the, at the gym call. I knew there was money to be made, and the guy will always say, "Dre, you got you got it. You going you going you going to be good. Right. You going to be you already have everything. You did everything correctly without even knowing how to do everything correctly. Right. And now you just add on this system with your system that you already know. You out of there. You can't fail. Mm-hmm. So that that's what was told to me. You cannot fail. There's no way you will fail." Man, so, you know, and, and add that system of what I already had and, and the, uh, the energy I had, the passion behind training, the, you know, all of those qualities, not just programming, but the quality of the personality and the, and the love behind it and the passion behind mm. it. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, that. And then went on from there and then did. Uh, that's when I started making my own money. You know what I mean? Getting my own clients and reeling them in. And like you said, the, the, that's where you learn how to sell. You learn how to. Uh, 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 manage your time right. and like he said um, just kind of piggybacking off of what y'all said and you know Nick question where he said that yes you do fall off a lot of people fall off and like he said the compound movements so I already knew I'm only going to have an hour to really work out to really get a workout in and like you said you're packing your schedule yep. so my hour was compound movements I would do bench press incline barbell or dumbbell uh, one arm row um, and I think it was a lat pull down and maybe a, a, a one of the machines roll or right, right. just a cable roll, but, uh, but that in the, in the numbers was low. So it was on a low, lower repetition side right. to keep the dense muscle, right? Cause I didn't have time to really go in there, pump right. up, right. like he said, warm up and do all that yeah. stuff. You didn't really have time for that, mm-hmm. you know? So, uh, yeah, so that's what the program and I did, you know, and this, you know, cause we're talking to the, to the next generation that's coming up. Um, you know, make the time. One hour, set your time for one hour. If it's calisthenics, w- just do something. Do the movements that you uh, love to do. Just do the movements that you love to do, and just have that is just straight to the point. Also, yeah. just I, I want to hold your thought there. That's mm-hmm. that's your marketing strategy. Yeah, because <laughs> like, we're approaching. Yeah. We were, we were approaching like, all right, we're gonna go dominate the floor. Exactly. Yeah. So and work out. Yeah. Prime time. There you go. The prime time. That's marketing. I call it, I w- and I was thinking about it, so that's perfect what you said. So when we looked at that is, I call it guerrilla marketing. The, you know, right. people, you, you get them in that, in that room, they talk to them like, oh, I see you all the time. Oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know your, your workouts looked easy, but damn, you trained me, you kind of did. Boom, like, oh, this is this actually. So from them, the, the members seeing you, they're like, oh, this guy is really, okay, I keep him, let me see. Oh, he's consistent. And then once you finally talk to them and they see you're more than just muscle, they right. see you have a personality, right. they see you laugh, they see, you know what I mean? Right. They see that you, you know, you're, you, human. you're human and, and you, and you make them human. Mm-hmm. You know, they come to you and now you, you're human before, you know, they'll come in with, with that office mentality, a, a problem. And Mass. then now, you know, you, uh, you, you open them up in a way that they need to be opened up outside of work 100%. or around their friends. You know? 100%. Pause. Pause the facts. The facts, though, when you see clients start talking to other clients 
or clients start talking to other members. I've had clients marry members. I've had clients marry other clients. Uh, matchmaker, oh yeah. So when, when that happens, you have a community. So I would say piggybacking off of this is you upcoming trainers, coaches, consultants, constituents, contractors, whatever you are in the game of wellness, if you're building up, you have to understand you're in a fishbowl. You have to put yourself out there. So working out uh, is super important. As we're bringing in new coaches onto our team, we tell them to work out, and we, we, we pay them for that. Why? Because showcase. You have to be able to showcase your skills, show that you can exercise under pressure while you know people are watching. You doing that side lunge, that side lunge ain't deep enough. It's not as deep as you just told your client. I've had clients come to me, it's like, oh, so you're doing half reps? Is half reps okay? We mean half reps, but you're, it doesn't seem like you're going as low as you tell me to go. Oh, how about that? You, you, it's one of those things where you gotta, you gotta pay attention. You gotta watch out now. And I wanna, so. I wanna piggyback off that, like you said, and also too, that was, you know, when you, when you do train, training is when you're training yourself, you know, besides your clients, uh, training shouldn't feel like a burden or like some. One thousand. That you should be building your skill. You should be like, oh, damn, I feel a little bit. You should be, be experimenting, still keeping your main program, but experiment with it. You know, do little circuits, do like basically experiment with your stuff and then you can apply it to your client and you can coach your, coach your clients the, the right way and, 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 and you get creative and you find out, you know, cues or how to, you know, cue people and just, just a whole, like, oh, I bent my knees here. This actually feel a lot better. I see why my client was saying, and you, you know, you, you, you have to learn through the rankings. That's how you're going to learn. You're, you're building a skill. You're building your skill every time you you work out. Facts. You're building your skill to to teach your clients to add on or to take out or to say, actually, we really don't need this or this is a little bit too much. Okay, I need to cut this set down. So, you know, a little Facts. stuff like that. Before we go to Nick's impetus story of wellness in the game, I'm I'm really eager to hear that. What what he's saying, if you're not really understanding, rewind the tape. It's facts. You need to be a master of exercise before you can coach someone and exercise. Like if you yourself can't do push-ups and pull-ups, I don't care if you're a woman, child, it doesn't matter. You need to be able to pull your body weight up. Always gear, you need to be able to push your body, you need to be able to squat down with your own body weight. You have to be able to master exercise if you're going to then teach someone or coach someone exercise. I'm a firm believer in that. People giving people different exercises or coaches giving people exercise they've never tried before. They saw it on Instagram and they're like, well, let's just do this today. Let's just do this today. Let's do that today. You're not a, you're not a professional. You're a workout, you're a workout part. That, but that's, period. But that's, um, you know, there's a market for that, but their name is, those names are not um, maybe, how are you would label it is, that's like the fitness enthusiast or the um, workout partners. What's, what's the name? Workout, but what's the name for it that we heard of? But as far as the well, workout partners, workout partners. That's, that's I mean, like, uh, we're not even gonna try to find it. It's workout partners. It's workout partners. We're not even gonna try to make none up. And if, all, so, if someone what, did not go through the painstaking process of mastering your craft, pain. <laughs> of getting some <laughs> certification, pain. any yeah, sort of online yeah. certification, something. Mm -hmm. So are they like a motivational coach? That's it. That's for what. There's, there's yeah. nothing wrong with it. Like. You yourself look good. You did something to look that way, whether it's genetics or whatever, right? So just say you're, you're going to teach them how you did. It's a accountability like, partner. Her, that, that could be yeah. one of those things, too. Meet me at the park. I'm going to work out. You can work out yeah, with me. Good. Like, yeah. totally fine. But if you call yourself a trainer or a coach, that's where I'm going to have to step in. That's where I'm going to step in. I'm like, no, you're not. No, you're not. Can't knock the hustle yet. Nah, I'm, I'm, no, you can hustle. I'm gonna say that person's a hustler. They're working out like crazy. They've they found something that works for them and they're trying to teach people things that work for them, but not for you. Then you understand why no one gets results. Now, when no one cares about results anymore, when we say in our company, we get results. That's how we measure success. People are like, what? You're gonna hold me accountable to lose weight, what? You're gonna hold me accountable to put on muscle. What are you talking about? Before you, uh, I want to say for the up and coming coaches, whoever listens, to, even even we, we learn from watching our 100%. own show. So um, you know the cues. I said the cues, but you learn adjustments. Like ah, the shoulder. Okay, the hands go back, and you can learn how to adjust. When 
ah, this feels this, ah, this feels, okay, let's right. take this out, okay, you can't hear hamstrings, uh, 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 back extensions, right. with the knees bent, right. get the hamstrings in there so you can find different movement. Mm. So where they think is pain, like we said before, is weakness leaving the body. I was about to go there next. You got it, you, you can find certain, so anytime they, they complain, they don't know what they're feeling, right? Sometimes they just don't know what they're feeling. They associate a pump, blood flow with pain, any, they associate anything with pain. Can and you learn how to make, you learn how to, okay, you can't do this, we, we're gonna do this. And you can go through four different hamstring movements, and then out of that four, you can find two. And we say, okay, we're gonna keep this program right now with these two hamstring movements, but these two movements, we'll graduate to that. We'll keep doing this for the next two weeks, whatever, three weeks, and we'll try this. And now they'll be able to hit the, the RDLs or whatever other movement, the uh, physio ball hamstring curl. So you can't just put some bands on someone's knees and do some little bit of corrective exercise and a little bit of micro adjustments and kind of stand on one leg while you touch the nose and you can't do any of that, you know, smarty pants type, type things. For what? He said he, he wanted to just feel. I mean, exercise is about feeling freedom, period. Um, so that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's just prepping, you know, me and y'all spoke about, you know, we always have these conversations. So what y'all see on here, we have these conversations all day long, period. But that's just basically the warm up to your actual work. Mm. That's all it is. It's just a warm up. Fire hydrants, mm. circumduction fire hydrants, uh, bird dog. Like that could be programmed at the end towards, uh, you know, for core movements and stuff like that. But at the beginning, those are warm up, full, like you say, the global warming the body, the movements. That's just warming your body up to prep you for the meat and potatoes. So, or the track work, or the boxing. With all sports stuff. That's facts. So when we're talking about exercise, then there has to be some order or rhythm mm -hmm. to the exercise. Mm -hmm. So even yeah. if you're going out for a run, are you just going to put on your clothes and just go out for a run? Basic that leg what, I mean, swings, basic leg swings, basic calf raises. Some, some people might not know that. kicks, but that's where we come in at. So hopefully y'all right. find this thing. Uh, we're talking, I want Nick to get in his yeah. uh, we, thing and he can Nick have the floor from here. We spoke about the order and I believe one of our exercise episodes in season three. We spoke about the order of things and whether mm -hmm. order should exist, when should it exist. Oh, yeah, do exactly. things gotta be organized or not. Yeah. Check you know out what? that. It's funny, I, I thought about the episode and Nick was in here doing the, the static stretching thing and I was like, dang. And that was kind of like, or you know what? The, the, the warm up process. Mm -hmm. It's actually, that's when it can be chaotic. Cause you have it programmed. I'm gonna do hamstring kickback high knee, you could kind of know your movements and you can go, normally the program would be high knees down and back. You would go high knee, hamstring kick back, and you could flow through those movements. Ladder, you could just flow through those movements. So I think that could be organized, chaotic that's stuff. A, that's the best you adapt. And, and, and you're adapting, you're freestyle, you're, you're dancing. You're basically dancing. You're freestyle. going right, kick back, spoon, whatever. It just I go do that all five reps, I do that all yeah, the time. just move. Yeah. I do that all the time, but that's yeah. you're at when once you get to that level, yeah. you're at a mastery level though. Mm, I see. Yeah. You're at a mastery level for you, you gotta, just for you to be like I'm do RDLs and I'm yeah. just flow just into the next this one. Yeah. Let me do this. Let me do this. Yeah. You're at master level, so I still say that's not chaotic. It's like in your head, you know what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. So you know when to flow. You know when you have to hold it. You know when you have to. That's mastery level. So if someone's on a lower level than mastery. I think that that organization is needed to get to a mastery level. You're not just going to be able to just be a master like that because you're a master. You're a master at exercise. Nick is a master at exercise. I can say that without any, like, period. I feel like I got, I'm close to the sun. Like no, 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 no. You that's... have imbalances and distortions while you exercise, but you have mastered what exercise is. We're talking about the right. pillar. Right. You know how what a warm-up is. You know what a cool-down is. You know what fascia is. You know what muscle is. Yeah. You know what tendons are. Right. You've done yeah. the work. You've done boxing. You've done track and field. You've done powerlifting. You have bodybuilding. You have done all of these things, but you have not mastered that. The skill. Yeah, the That's skill. a skill. Yeah, it's I'm a not skill. talking it's about skill. that. Yeah. You have someone that knows how, a skill, a golfer has max, mm -hmm. mastered the skill, but has he mastered exercise? Can they yeah. squat? Let's go into that before we come back to me. What is it... That, What's the difference between viewing exercise as a skill versus viewing it as however it's put in the magazines? I mean... As an activity. What's the difference between looking at exercise as an activity versus a skill? 
So when we're talking about activity, that could just be something you do for fun. I'm going to go to the beach and I'm going to play with my kids. That's an activity. You can go to the beach and say, all right, family, we're going to run down here. No, listen. That's true. We That's activity. We're going, to go, we're going to race. We're going to go from here to here. Mommy versus daughter, dad versus kid, a boy. Absolutely. We're going to go from here to here. Whoever gets here gets free lunch or gets another thing. That's you organization. Your kids, you charging your kids for lunch? That's organization. Huh? Okay. Listen, mm -hmm. hey, everybody got their allowance. Yeah. Drink, come on, bring it in. Uh, but when you're talking about that, that's a little bit of organization. That is exercise. But for, when, the, for the pop, for the audience, like what, how do you, do you got to view it different? Can, is it okay to just look at exercise as an activity? Do you need to look at can, exercise as a skill? You can, but what's going to determine the difference between, in my opinion, my professional opinion, when someone's doing an activity, going fishing, uh, going on a boat ride, you're doing that uh, for enjoyment, you're doing it for- No expectations. Like, yes, mm -hmm. you're just doing it. It's an activity, yeah. I wanna just do it. Yeah. Those expectations come with organization because you have a goal. Once you have a goal that is exercise, you have to exercise, you have to work to get to that goal. An activity is, I have no goal, I have no expectations. <laughs> I just wanna go Word, out I just, I'm just going out. Now, if you want to get your body to change, to transform to something that it's never been, or it was like that when you're in high school, you wanna get back to that, you're gonna need organization yeah. of work, yeah. skill work. You're gonna to have to master skills of movement. So it's, it's basically what you're saying is, uh, you said, you know, if you're just going in there blank, right? right? You're just like, ah, oh, I'm just, so I will put that in the, it's, it's, it shows you how powerful the mindset can be, how the mind can be, how it can change everything. You could just come in the gym and just go through the motion. Or you could come in the gym and do the same workout and be like, I am mm. trying to manifest this. Great point. There's two different, there's two different things. Great point. And that's why I say it's exercise. Yeah. That manifestation of what you're going to do is organization, yeah. thought process, consciousness. Yeah. Concentration. That's, yeah, concentration. Whatever words, yeah. you SAT words you want to use, I love them. Yeah. That's exercise. So mm -hmm. the problem is that people come into the gym and they do activities Activity. every time they come in yeah. and they expect results mm -hmm. that exercise will give you, mm. that organization and goal setting will give you. Mm -hmm. But if you come in there with no expectations or no goals, how are you gonna get, you don't even know what you wanna get to. You don't even know what you wanna be. Figure out what you wanna do with exercise. I wanna walk a mile or I wanna walk around the block. So emphasis on that is going to breed the difference between exercise and activity, right? So a lot of people come in and they, they have no expectations. They just come in, I wanna sweat, I wanna sweat. Fine, you might sweat, maybe you might not. But if you don't know, I want to lose 10 pounds, I want to look like this person, I want to feel like this person, I want to have no injury, I want to perform, you have a goal, you have to set a workout routine, workout regimen, training routine, whatever you want to call it, to get to that goal. That's the organization comes in. So that's the difference. You have to, you have, to have organization for exercise. You don't have to have organization for activity. I agree with what you say, if you want to come in and, and sweat. So, you know, uh, people might get it. So I, I love the way how you put that. And, and how you organize that. So you could just come in and just sweat, right? Come in and do whatever and sweat. You get on a treadmill, like, oh, I'm just gonna do a one minute. I don't know why I'm doing a one minute. <laughs> what, what number I'm trying to hit. Nothing is wrong with, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry. Ain't I didn't know that was gonna make y'all laugh. But, <laughs> you know, you can do, you can do the, the one minute, but what is your goal for that one minute? Yeah. Like, what are you trying to get your heart rate up? Yeah. Are you trying to go, like, what? Is yeah, you yeah. trying to go up the hill? Yes. Like, what, it, what, what is the goal for doing that one minute and organizing you know, uh, uh, the sled, oh, I'm just gonna push the sled and just move it. Like, what is your actual goal? What, you want your 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 uh, feet to get faster, right. uh, brute strength. Right. Like, you know, I'm trying to find certain things you, 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 you can sure. do with the, you can do so that many things, things with the sled. sled. Like, right. what are you trying to do in that sweat session? Nothing is wrong with the sweat session, long as you organize it. But the sweat session, what we like to call it is conditioning. Mm -hmm. So we might say sweat, but when we say sweat, we're talking about conditioning. conditioning. We're talking about conditioning Facts. the heart, the lungs, the feet, everything, the grit, conditioning the grit, mm. being able to push through, being able to grind through. Right. Like how bad do you actually really want to lose the 10 pounds? You know what I'm saying? You need the grit, you need to bite down on your mouthpiece, job done. You need to bite down, sometimes you need to bite down on the mouthpiece. I hope y'all listening, man. Like, I hope you're really paying you know attention. Like, grit through it. You gotta really, pay. This, is, this is not even no coach, this is just life. Yeah. You got in life, you gotta mm -hmm. fight. People don't understand. You got to fight. You got to fight. And that builds fight. outside those strength and conditioning. 
with the sled, that sh it builds. It builds out there. You want to wake up and you want to eat the donut or you want to eat, eat, eat the smoothie. Yep. You, you want to wake up, you want to stretch even though you're tired, you took your kids, all this other stuff, but you know you're going to be injured if you don't stretch or you're just going to go mm. to sleep. Mm. You got to be able to fight. If you want to mm. be fit, I like that. you got to fight for fitness, period. And that's where I see exercise as. If, thank God I'm waking up and I feel good and I have the ability to, to fight mm. to stay like this. That's it. Or you can say you're going to fight. I don't want to exercise. I'm going to fight, do everything in my power not to exercise. I like that. That's it. So, Nick, I want to hear from you. I want the, the introduction story to your first bout of exercise, like exercising the program, like putting together, like working. The, the energy was dope, so I'm going to make a comment and then go into that. Perfect. It's basically, the mindset is basically, how do you answer things, even like exercise? Do you think from an approach of, I don't want to do this? Like, immediately when you think of like, a, uh, when, you, when you start making a plan or you start reacting to things, like I was thinking about it as you were talking, because I was like, yeah, mm. like that's part of my life. Like when you said a donut and a smoothie, I'm like, I don't even think about donut. You know? like I have zero... <laughs> Like zero word. Like I have no. What is that gonna serve me for? Yeah. And the same. I'm like, okay. So how does that? I, that kind of goes to all other decisions. I don't really think about what I can get away with not doing. I always think about what can I do. Mm. There's a big switch. Was like, what can I do? What was that like? What can I do? Even if like like you said, oh, you, you know, you have X amount of clients or X amount of responsibilities, and you get, but you still have to stretch. What can you do? I think don't ever let your mind go into a space where you start thinking, what can I not do? What can't I do? Yeah. yeah. Stay in the what can I Because that's how, that's the only way we are able to mm. adapt and get through all our stuff. Like we've been, what can we do right now? We got to like wait that. three hours for the space to open up for, for, for content back in 2020. Mm, okay. Like what can we do in the meantime? Like what can you do? Love that. Build up. Yeah, it was fire. Get a space. Yeah. What can and you do? No, everybody can answer that. I like that. Huh? Don't even what? let your mind go into what can you not do. Yeah, I don't like All right, that. So, I don't like, yeah. I like my that. first bout of exercise, honestly, I'm going to go to the first program I had that I actually had to go. I remember looking back, <clears throat> I actually looked this up on the GPS recently, just out of like reminiscing. Mm. It was a track in North Carolina, Jacksonville, uh, Northwoods Elementary. Okay. There was a track, it was a gravel track. I just remember being the last damn kid, always having to do my damn 10, I think it was 10 laps. Like that was the exercise, that was the PE day for the day. You gotta do 10 laps. I just remember, I was like, I, I don't think I had an inhaler. I, I, I had, I think later in the fact I found out I had asthma, but I just remember that feeling of like, God, like, yo, I got 10, like I didn't even think of, honestly I was caught up with like, damn, I, don't, I didn't have a can-do attitude as a kid in that, in that era. I was about 10, maybe 11 years old. And I remember just like, I wasn't, I wasn't anxious about it, but I just remember like, yo, this, damn, 10, like 10 laps. <laughs> <laughs> even when you say it right real, now. 10 laps, I'm like, back, I was like, yo, I'm ten, like, yo, shh, even, hey now, man, even now, I, even now, 10, 10 laps. laps. What we laughing around? No, no, it's not a even track? a track. No, it's not even a, it's and just it was a gravel, gravel track. It was gravel. Still, it wasn't though. a big, it wasn't, it was just Still, like, even if it's a parking lot, gravel. Yeah. I just remember, like, I, honestly, I don't know, but I remember, Ten like, laps is a lot. I think I was having conversations with myself because I was the last person. On the trip. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I can remember Talk it so yourself. bad because I was like, "Yo, yo Tucker, you so." Um, <laughs> so that Man, was my first, yo. like, if I looked, if I think back about it, that's probably my first. I used to play soccer, but it was never. As a kid, I was still overweight because I was in the south with bad diet environment, but. Um, I always loved that. Like, I always mm. loved that. Um, organized. That's why I was expected oh, organization God. coming up. I see. You know, God. just because I knew, okay, soccer, you have to do this. You have mm. to go on at a certain time. Right. You have to, this is what you're going to focus on. Right. Everybody right. has their position right. very early on. Mm. And so that kind of early on is, okay, what am I, okay. I'm, anywhere I went from there was like, I'm kind of expecting the same thing. Got okay. it. Who's yeah, the, yeah. And actually, you should apply that to everything else, even in the general pop, for the general popper. Who's, who, like, Everybody in your life, as far as your goals, what, what are their positions? If you think about the sport mentality, like, is, is someone an enemy, or like an opponent? Because some people in your life for your goals could be an opponent. 
They're gonna make you those those offers. Mm-hmm. Hey, do you want to? Don't you want to come out and stay up all night with me? Have this alcohol? Like, damn, I just told you I'm trying to lose 20 right. pounds because I'm worried mm-hmm. about my family history of health. Huh. So you're fighting. So you're figure fighting. fighting. You're fighting. I mean, you're just fight. figure out figure out everybody's mm-hmm. position. Mm-hmm. Gotta fight. Um, and then my first dollar in the game. I remember, I don't know why I feel like saying this, but I remember paying Dre thirty dollars a week. <laughs> oh, remember yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I so your first back. dollar given. Yeah. Was that like yeah, I remember was that. that like one of your first dollars was taken? Actually, no, Cody. Yeah. I just yeah. I just remember like <laughs> shit. Yeah. I didn't even know anything about numbers. I was just like, yo, I gotta I was kinda still looking for that organization. I was like, yo, like let me know how much because basically that was the ego saying, I'm not gonna definitely ask nobody for no favors. Uh, but I want to ask for a favor. Yeah. So mm-hmm. just put a price on it so I don't feel like a favor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it was never was said, but I think he's doing it as a favor because no one charged. Like, imagine mm-hmm. that $30 a week. Would you pay $30 a week to train with Dre? Imagine now. That price is... Uh, <laughs> what, what's that fetch? For call? real. Yeah. It don't Yesterday's did, price? Yeah. It's not yeah, today's yeah. price. It's over with. <laughs> <laughs> it's so over um, with. I love I'm that. I'm super grateful for that. And then the first dollar I made was... Honestly, I never looked at the game, but the first dollar I made was, um, shit. Honestly, I had, me, like, y'all knows me. I was not even thinking numbers. All I was thinking was opportunity. Yeah, that's... So I was just following Dre around, um, learning and be like, yo, this is, this is more opportunity. My other opportunity before coming into the personal training industry game in 2013 was McDonald's, which I didn't get a job at, or those jobs where I could pass out flyers. I remember mm. like that was the option. It's like, and I was like, yo, I was trying to get, I was like, yo, please, please hook me up at this job at McDonald's, please. And they just couldn't, I mean, get accepted. Try Subway, couldn't get accepted. So basically the creator, the, the universe had other plans. Mm. Facts. But I remember right. like, yo, I hope I get this flyer. Facts. Like if you get a flyer job, if, like that's a good, that's, if you get a flyer job, you know, that's, that's kind of, entrepreneurship right there yeah. the flyer like handing out flyers but drake uh, brought me on uh after the you know aside of a nine to five opportunity kind of just happened so back to back yeah and then i learned that the personal training industry in business school was worth mm-hmm. 8.9 billion dollars in 2016 now i was like oh these, these lunch these mo- I, I, <laughs> they lunch <laughs> I said, I said, I said, wait a minute. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. Like, said, I already knew there was money. We make it hundreds of yeah. I, I had the same yeah. response too, man. Yeah. I'm not even going to lie. Like, people can be like, oh, it's not about the money. It's not about the money. When I saw my first trainer make $100,000, when I saw, like, they yeah. showed me the tax return. Like, mm. like, you earned over, it was $102,000. I'm not saying numbers. I'm just saying when I saw that, I was like, "Oh, oh, okay." And and it's funny. It's funny that you say that. So I I I knew it was money and training because I always had people like Nick come up to me, "Man, I'll pay you whatever." And mm-hmm. I didn't know nothing. I was just like, you know, just didn't know nothing. Right. And then when I went into that uh, space, uh, that gym, I remember him telling me the numbers. Mm. Oh yeah. Boom. boom. He tell, he tell, oh, I was picking. I was picking the brain. Right. Same way how you. I was. I was the same way. That's how I got all that. So I, um, he told me the numbers, and then he said, and I, I was like, what? I was like, someone is paying, you know, it wasn't that, but I was like, damn, how am I going to get someone to pay that much for me? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How am I going to get there? Yeah. You know? So I got there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got there. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> just in case. I got there. Y'all were lunches. Yeah, I got there. My boy, Dre. I got there. Yesterday's price. I got, I got there. Uh, first, I was like, yo, Dre's being pretty, pretty vulnerable right now. I never, <laughs> I never really heard him talk about, yeah. you know, damn it. I'm nervous. It's still, it's still very, yeah. very yeah. stealth, though. Ended yeah. that yeah. shit immediately. Yeah. He's like, so. Still, so, um, that, and I remember him telling me the number, the pay rate, the hour, and the how many times this person purchased that, so, yeah. that many times, that right. price, right. a 125 pack. Yeah. Boom, at this price. All of them. Oh, he was doing yearly sales? Yeah, it was doing 125 packs. Yeah, so he really, sorry, you know, that person yeah. really, don't, 
picked up the bag, bro. Yeah, bad. How did he was leaving that game and he still made that yeah. mistake? Yeah, so yeah. I, 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 damn. That's for another episode. That's for another. Yeah, episode. but in this game, but, a lot of things come, and it's about adaptability. You finish your thought though. Um, you know the numbers. I, I knew the numbers, so I already knew you didn't have to tell me. You didn't have to tell me much. Once you told me that, I'm like, what? Like, oh, I'm out here. Poof. Let's go. Where is that? <laughs> Let's go. I'm about to get this. Yeah. What? Yeah. You mean to tell me I could do I could do what I love? And I don't have to answer to no boss and I don't have to I can make my own hours? Yeah. And you mean to tell me I could do what I love yeah. and make money off of it. And then there's so much opportunity that could come from that. And all so much want... opportunity comes from personal training. You can do yeah. anything you want outside of that. I was going to I was going to say that if you guys don't know what your purpose, you love wellness and you're mm -hmm. in wellness you got a fitbit you got an aura ring mm -hmm. you're getting protein shakes and you you're doing salads and you mm -hmm. you're going to a gym you have a gym membership like if you're really passionate about something around the wellness industry you need to comment like share Thanks. subscribe this because we're talking about opportunities from him now having his own production company but he started off as a trainer yep. i'm not going to list his accomplishments because you guys might feel a little bad i might feel bad too <laughs> But the reason why all of this system is working is because this man went to business school. Yes. Business school. I didn't go to business school. Okay, stop. Don't lie to the people because then you're going to make me seem like I'm a liar, man. Facts, my bad. He went to <laughs> business to school, okay? And that's why our business is running. Let's listen. Mm -hmm. I was out the game. I was out the game, y'all. That mm. was selfish. I said, wait a minute. I was out the game. I was game. selfish. I was saying, yo, wait a minute. All of my LA people, my DC people, I was like, yeah, 42, he's still in the game. I was out the game. I yo. was selfish. I was like, yo, you realize you. Yeah, I said, I felt like what, you probably have a like a music industry right. reference to this, but when I saw you, I was like, bro, you realize, you know, this, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute, yeah, okay. There's still a couple million to make off of you. For real. Like, right? not, not to say, hey, wait a minute, bro, okay. We're talking about a deal, man. Okay. You ain't make millions yet? Hold on, man. Word. Facts, man. Mm -hmm. and, and so and we got an offer on a couple of so I'm just gonna Ooh. Oh no, hold on, hold on. Tom. Next season Sorry, receipts. We're gonna cut that out. Next season. No, I'll cut it out. No, no, I was trying to mimic Dre. You know, Dre will cut that out. Listen, but all in all, fellas, I, I love this conversation. Uh, this is great. This is exactly what I wanted. A conversation around exercise. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to make it fun. I hope you guys got some information out of this. If not, we're going to give you a gem right now. Quick spill of how we, how um, we think about exercise and what you guys should kind of be thinking about if you want to start your journey or whatever part of the journey you're on. Like, how can exercise play a role? Okay, if you have exercise goals, identify people's position. Even if you have a Pilates studio, what's, that, what's, what's their position? What, what are they doing for you? Mm -hmm. Boom, identify everybody's position ASAP. Your stores, what position are the stores playing for you? Okay, you, you're, the, you're the GM, whatever sport reference, mm -hmm. you know, you the World Cup coming up, you know. <laughs> I love that. Find the position of everybody that's around you in wellness. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, listen, exercise is, is just freedom of movement. So do anything that you love, that you can move freely, and then you can add on to that, love more things, be more dimensional, and just move your body. That's it. Move your body. I would say, up in the game, our conversation... We talked about <laughs> You got it. I hope Drake got that. It's okay. Yo, it's yeah. hilarious. I don't bro. even know if I could. Yo. <laughs> Yo. Um, okay. I would say, I would <laughs> say, like I would say, um, I just never had a chest before. Sorry. Burr, he got connection. <laughs> yeah. Connection. Connection. <laughs> the training world. Right. Uh, I want to say apply, be open to movements, be open to, to everything. Uh, Make sure you don't forget your roots of training, the roots of your training. Don't neglect the roots of what got you here. You know, don't look at back extensions as it's, it's a bad thing. Actually, that would make your I feel like PT he's talking clients. To me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he's talking to me. I can't hold it anymore. Dre just told me to do calisthenics, and I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. Calisthenics brought me to the game. He's talking about me. Hey, you know, if you're in church with a preacher, you've been looking at a preacher like I'm that. looking at Nick. I'm like, he's talking about Nick. Oh, like, he That's talking so about me. true. That's so but true. But what he saying is facts, man. Um, you know, don't, facts. Don't, facts. Don't, don't, forget, don't forget those small things facts. that, you know, when you weren't in pain, 
what movements you was doing when you were in the pain, you mm. was functioning mm. at your highest level. Mm. You go back to that program, you're gonna be like, damn, I wasn't doing any of this. This should be actually a warm up. I should cut this down from 20 minutes to five minutes. You know what I mean? You should go back. <laughs> yeah, I was like, damn, the preacher's preaching. So it's like, you know, uh, yeah, I, I know I'm rambling, but you know, this is just for the up and comings, you know, Facts. up and comers. Uh, yeah, you know, keep your keep the fundamentals, and then as you as you go on your journey, just continue to learn and implement it. You know, just implement your new movements, what works, what doesn't work. You know, what should be the staple at all times that everyone can do and everyone should do to stay strong, right? Um, you know, and yeah, that's pretty much. We don't need no close out after that. Like, share, subscribe, all that. Um, let's get into it. Beautiful. Ready to go to the next? Yes, sir. Yep.